Hello there everyone. I decided I wanted to make another video this morning and uh, I don't really have a lot of records to show here but uh, because I'm itching to make a video I'm going to do this final finds of all kinds and uh, I'm going to start with a soundtrack album. Uh, I've got a few soundtrack albums actually. This first one is Kill Bill Volume 2. Uh, a, real, a really good movie. Uh, I really love it. I love it even more than Kill Bill Volume 1. Uh, I think of the whole thing as an entire epic really, you know. Just like they used to do the old uh, roadshow movies. Um, love Tarantino. Great back cover. Look at that. Nice picture. Tarantino and Uma Thurman. Um, love Tarantino, uh, but I haven't seen The Hateful Eight yet, believe it or not. I used to run right out to see all his new movies. Maybe I'm getting a little Tarantino out at this point. But, uh, you know, Pulp Fiction, The Kill Bill Saga, all that stuff. Um, I pulled this out already. This is an insert that comes with this album. That's a nice scene from the movie. A little martial arts stuff going on, a little training. And you got the back there, which is nice. Um, the record, I was wondering if it was going to be on colored vinyl. Um, so many newer releases are these days, but this isn't. Still, I like the label. It's a nice picture. Silhouette shot from the movie. Okay, the uh, next two I'm going to show are also soundtrack albums, but they're old soundtracks and they're still sealed. So that's pretty cool. Uh, a woman came into my record store and she had a whole bunch of these old vintage albums, uh, movie soundtracks. Now this one, the first one I'm going to show is perfect timing because it's the Easter holiday tomorrow and they always show on TV Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments from 1956. Uh, from what I understand, this is an original, still sealed 1950s album. I have a copy of this from later on with a different cover. I think it's maybe the 60s or early 70s it came out. But this is the, the real thing, <laughs> the, the first one. And uh, it's in the original shrink, and I hate to open it, you know, but I just may do that. It's got a gatefold here, and it's a very th thick album, and it would be so much nicer to show the gatefold, but... Um, Maybe I'll do a seal to reveal to something one day and open it to show it. Uh, I also went to see the Ten Commandments with my girlfriend this past weekend. Fathom Events was bringing it back to the big screen for 60th anniversary. Look at this. Still sealed. One of my favorite horror films. The original LP of Rosemary's Baby. This is uh, an album that was reissued recently. And I picked up the reissue, uh, you know, and played it. I uh, haven't decided whether I'm ever going to play this one. I'll leave it still sealed. It's so nice to have like this. I mean, I could always play the reissued album, which I'm guessing, without doing any research, I'm guessing the reissued album has, if anything, even more music and tracks than this does. So... That's very nice. Um, okay, that's it for the soundtracks. Okay, now we're going to show, you know, music, regular, uh, you know, vocal stuff. Uh, this one here, Elvis Presley. I haven't been buying as much Elvis as I used to, um, but this album cover caught my eye. So I picked it up, and it was uh, called King of Rock and Roll. It's from Denmark uh, from the 80s, uh, I think the mid-80s. That's a good cover, you know, and the track listing looks pretty nice. Um, if you can read the track listing, you can pause it. If not, trust me, it's nice. Um, here's the label. And it was only a few bucks, you know. I mean, I wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't just, uh, I think it was four or five bucks. Wouldn't have bought it otherwise. Trying to cut down on... Uh, a lot of excess Elvis uh, lately. Okay, uh, next item. This brings me back to my childhood. The next two I'm going to show. Um, start with this one, Jackson Five, ABC. Now, this album, whenever it shows up for whatever reason, doesn't always come in in great shape. It's always messed up. This is the cleanest I've ever seen this record, and ABC really reminds me of when I was a child. I mean, a lot of people heard songs on the AM radio stations like ABC and the Osmonds, you know, things like that. And 
if you were like 19, 20, 25 years old, you probably thought, what the hell is happening to music in the early 70s? You know, some of the pop stations on AM are just so sappy and silly. But I got to tell you, for me at the time, I was 8, 9, 10 years old. So all those old early 70s songs really were great for me. I was the perfect age for them. And this is really pretty minty copy, I got to say, my Motown, you know. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to regret buying this. I mean, I love uh, the song ABC and the Love You Save. I'll have to hear if I like the entire album. I mean, you know, a Jackson 5 greatest hits would suit me just fine. But sometimes, if you're like me, there's a record that you have to buy for whatever reason. And this just this just screams my childhood. So, it, it makes even as I present this video, I'm thinking back to where I was and my family and the cousins and everything that... We used to uh, play that music in the backyard on the radio and on our little portable record phonographs, battery operated. You know? Okay, let's stay right with that for now for a moment. I mentioned the Osmonds, okay? And it's with, you know, I hate to call things guilty pleasures, but uh, sometimes you feel a little it's funny with certain albums. This one here I had as a kid. This is just called Osmonds, right? And what really attracted to me, first of all, this album was only three bucks. And second of all, it has that sticker there, hype sticker about the single One Bad Apple being on it. Uh, I had this when I was a kid, but I didn't have the sticker, you know, obviously. And it's a DJ, uh, DJ promotional copy, which... Uh, Kind of was interesting. Yeah, so again, the combination of remembering my childhood and uh, having this album and liking the Osmonds. And the promo label is yellow. It's the MGM uh, DJ copies. It's not a white label promo, it's a yellow, yellow label promo. Um, we're going to follow this up with something else, but. Uh, the song uh, Sweet and Innocent on here, uh, which is kind of weird. In addition to One Bad Apple, there was this song Sweet and, and Innocent by uh, Donny Osmond, I thought. Anybody know the reason why it's on this album? Because I know Donny Osmond had a solo album, and Sweet and Innocent was that. I always, I always associated Sweet and Innocent with, uh, which is a song that I really like. It brings me back to my childhood. Sorry. Silly as can be. Sugar and pop. But, um... I know apologies. You don't like, you, go screw yourself if you don't like it. <laughs> I guess that I got you know I don't like apologizing for music that I like. Um, anyways, anybody know why that's on that album? But look at this. I also picked this up, which is a another not for sale promotional record, and there it is, sweet and innocent, and he's billed on here as uh, Donny Osmond of the Osmonds. That's why I'm wondering what what the deal is, you know. Um, I always associated that song with him by himself, not with his brothers. So, All right, that's enough Osmonds. Uh, I was at a record fair and I picked up this Monkeys EP. It's got uh, six songs on it and. When you first look at it, you think, uh, wow, this looks like a really vintage 1960s piece, you know, and it's kind of like a little worn. But then I looked at it, it was from 1984. Yeah, I guess that's old by today's standards, right? And there's the songs that are on it. Well, you probably saw the front. You know, and by the way, when it says alternate title, alternate title is that actually Randy Skowskit, which I love. One of my all-time favorite monkey songs. Maybe sometimes I call it the favorite. And... There is the label. Not bad for five bucks. Okay, last item here. Lately I've been into Billy Joel a little bit more than I'd ever been before. And I thought this was cool for a couple of bucks. It was hanging around my video, I keep calling it video store, record store. I used, to, I used to hang out at a video store. Sometimes I, I call the record store the video store. Anyway, it's a backstage pass, Billy Joel. And that's right in the era that I like him, probably like around 1980. It's uh, Madison Square Garden, June 20, 23rd, 4th, 
6th, 7th, and 8th, 1980 from WPLJ Radio 95.5. Um, just thought it was a nice little collectible piece to have. And that will kick it in the head for this video. Um, thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and I had a lot of fun making it. Cheers, I drink my water.